Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to fix the P0700 and the P0711 code. This applies to the 8L90 8-speed transmission. General Motors has used this transmission in many applications. <clears throat> Before we get started, I should tell you that you, if you don't have a way to read the transmission temperature, then you won't be able to get an accurate uh, fluid level check on this transmission. If you monitor the transmission fluid temperature sensor uh, while you're operating the vehicle, you'll usually see um, a pretty good temperature swing within you know an unreal amount of time. Um, that's that's a good indication that your temperature sensor is failing. There are three 10 millimeter bolts holding this heat shield on the passenger side of the transmission. This isn't completely necessary, but it does help for you to see what's going on behind it. What you see here is the transmission fill plug. You want to take and pop the top. It's like a push pin type deal. Pop the top and then you have to kind of work it out of the hole. It's sometimes a snug fit. Um, so you might ask why I'm taking the fill plug out when I'm not filling the transmission. I'm actually going to suck the transmission fluid out through this port and it just helps not make such a big mess when you're dropping the transmission pan. So this is what I use to suck the transmission fluid out the fill hole. It's uh, made by Mighty Vac, but you can get one at Harbor Freight that's very similar. This one's air operated, so you just hook a compressed air line up to it, and it starts sucking, and usually, usually you get about six quarts out. Now you want to start taking the transmission pan bolts loose. I take them all out in the front, and I leave one in the back. And that helps you lower the front so you can get the sucker hose in the front and suck up any remaining uh, transmission fluid that runs to the front and runs out of the filter. Once you get as much out of the pan as you can, then you'll want to remove that last 10 millimeter bolt, the pan bolt. And again, you don't have to have the sucker. It just helps uh, prevent a big mess. This next tip will save you some time. If you get a large pry bar and you pry down the, on the exhaust, the, kind of like the driver's side there, you can just slide that transmission pan right out. At this point, you can remove the transmission filter. You just kind of grab it with two hands and just kind of work it straight down. So here's what the valve body looks like on the 8L90. Now you will have to remove the valve body to replace this transmission harness. General Motors made a change and they changed it from two piece to one piece. You'll want to undo all the electrical connectors. They are dummy proof. They'll only go in one way in one place so you can't mess that up. There are three of these little tabs that hold the harness to the valve body. You just squeeze them with a needle nose and pull them right out. There's one bolt holding the manual detent spring. It's eight millimeter. Next, you need to disconnect this manual valve from the linkage. It's a little spring with a hook. Pull back the spring and disconnect the hook. For the rest of these bolts, you'll need a low profile Torx socket. They're kind of hard to find. You can get a regular Torx Plus socket and grind it, but I'll put a link to one in the description. These two bolts are for the oil pump baffle. They are torqued to yield. You need to replace those. What you're looking at here is probably the most aggravating part of this whole thing. The oil pump on the transmission is chain driven, so you have to take this little spring clip and pull it away, and that releases it, and you're able to slide it off the splined pump. One trick I use here is I use a zip tie and zip tie the chain to the sprocket. Makes it a little easier to keep up with it. It helps a little on reinstallation. Now you're going to need that EP10 Torx Plus socket again and start taking out these six Torx Plus bolts. They are 11 of these bolts. Take the six out in the front, the three out in the back, and leave the last two in the center 
just because it helps hold up the valve body until you're ready. Here's a better view of the rear two. They're kind of hard to get to. I usually break them loose by hand and then run them out with a swivel. And this is the third one in the rear. Uh, again, I break it loose by hand and then run it out with a swivel. Here's the last two that remain. Go ahead and shoot one out, loosen the other, and get ready to drop the whole valve body at once. This is going to be one of those do as I say and not as I do moments. Do not use a rag to touch anything on the inside of the transmission. This valve body was super hot as a customer just had drove it in. It's the only reason I'm using a rag. If you have to use a rag, use a lint free type. Now that the valve body is out, you need to pay special attention to this seal right here. Sometimes it falls out, or sometimes it just hangs in there just a little longer and then falls out, but it's got to go back. Undo this last connector, and then you're ready to move on to the outside. This is what the top of the valve body looks like. Back on the outside of the transmission on the passenger side, this is a red safety lock. You want to pop that backwards, all right, and then you press in the black uh, tab and release it. The transmission disconnected there. Okay, since we are replacing this harness, it doesn't matter if we damage this connector or not. So just take a um, just take a big screwdriver and a hammer, put it in there, and knock it out. This is much easier than trying to release all the little tabs around the outside. And there you have it. Here's the harness right next to the new one. Notice that the old harness is two pieces. New harness is all one piece. And this little gray area here, this is the that's the temperature sensor. Reassembly starts with putting the wire and harness back through the pass through. There's two O-rings. You need to press it in until it locks. You can also check on the outside of the transmission and make sure the little fingers, the little locks, are uh, are engaged. You want to connect this, um, this this one connector here that goes underneath the valve body. Go ahead and plug the electrical connector up, um, stick it in there, flip the little cam lock down, and uh, push in the connector assurance plastic lock there. Okay, now we've got to get this seal to stay in the transmission. This is transmission assembly lube. What you want to do is put it on the seal and then stick it up in the hole, and hopefully it will hold it there you put the valve body back up. Have a bolt ready, lift the valve body up and put it in place on the dowels. Start the bolt and run it up far enough to where it holds the valve body in place. Start all the remaining bolts by hand. Here I'm using a power tool just to run the bolts up. I'm not tightening the valve body. Torque all bolts in sequence at 80 inch pounds. After they're all torqued to 80 inch pounds, I just go over them a second time. This time in no particular order. Just make sure they're all at 80 inch pounds. You need to install the manual valve spring. 
Take a good set of needle nose, pull the spring back, and slide the pin into the valve. Install the one 8 millimeter bolt in the detent spring and tighten to 106 inch pounds. Install the wiring harness onto the valve body. Then connect all the connectors. Again, they're, they will only go one way, so it's pretty hard to screw them up. Install the oil pump sprocket onto the blind oil pump, and then you want to push the clip back in, and you'll see it it'll fall into place. You shouldn't be able to push it off at this point. And clip the little zip tie you installed earlier. Put the oil pump baffle back in and then install those two bolts and they are torque to yield bolts. Torque the baffle bolts to 35 inch pounds and 45 degrees. Might as well put a new transmission filter while you're in here. Just push it up in the hole, line up the dowel and it's installed. Install and start by hand all 15 pan bolts and torque to 89 inch pounds. Remember you need to pry in that left hand corner to allow enough clearance to get the pan back in. Go ahead and rinse the bottom of the pan and the exhaust pipe. Here you're going to see me put this heat shield back in place before I fill the transmission up. I do this because you have to check the transmission fluid with the engine running and this area gets super hot. We need to talk about transmission fluid here. The correct fluid is made by Mobile One and has a blue label on it. No other fluid will do. This is another fluid extractor except this one you can pump out of usually fill this with about eight quarts and then I'll pump seven into the fill plug hole and then crank it. After the vehicle starts you need to monitor the transmission fluid temperature. Go ahead and pump the eighth quart into the, into the fill plug. With the transmission between 93 and 113 degrees you need to remove the transmission level check plug. There will be a steady stream of transmission fluid to start. So wait till it starts to dribble out and reinstall that plug. And that's it. You just seen me replace the transmission harness on this 8L90. Now there may be other ways to do it but this is the way I did it. I shared it with you. Before doing anything like this you need to consult the service manual for your vehicle this video was for informational purposes only. It's up to you to follow the correct service procedure in the service information.